Chapter 28, The Black Hills When we saw the first sign for the Black Hills, the whispers changed and once again commanded, Rush, hurry, rush. We had spent too long in South Dakota. There were only two days left and a long way to go. Maybe we should skip the Black Hills, I said. What? Gramps said. Skip the Black Hills. Skip Mount Rushmore. We can't do that. But today's the 18th. It's the fifth day. Do we have a deadline someone didn't tell me about? Gramps said. Heck, we've got all the time in the... Gramps gave him a look. I just gotta see these Black Hills, Gramps said. We'll be quick about it, Chicka Bitty. The whispers walloped me. Rush, rush, rush. I knew we wouldn't make it to Idaho in time. I thought about sneaking off while Gram and Gramps were looking at the Black Hills. Maybe I could hitch a ride with someone who drove fast. But the thought of someone speeding, careening around curves, especially the snaking curves down in Lewiston, Idaho, which I had heard so much about. When I thought about that, it made me dizzy and sick. Heck, Gramps said, I ought to turn this wheel over to you, Chickabitty. All this driving is making me crazy as a loon. He was only joking, but he knew I could drive. He had taught me to drive his old pickup truck when I was 11. We used to ride around on the dirt roads on their farm. I drove, and he smoked his pipe and told stories. He said, You're a hell of a driver, Chickabitty, but don't you tell your mama I taught you. She thrashed me half to death. I used to love to drive that old green pickup truck. I dreamed about turning 16 and getting my license. But then, when Mama left, something happened to me. I became afraid of things I had never been afraid of before. And driving was one of these things. I didn't even like to ride in cars, let alone drive the truck. The Black Hills were not really black. Pines covered the hills, and maybe at dusk they looked black. But when we saw them at midday, they were dark green. It was an eerie sight, all these rolling dark hills. A cool wind blew down through the pines, and the trees swished secrets among them. My mother had always wanted to see the Black Hills. It was one of the sights she was most looking forward to on her trip. She used to tell me about the Black Hills, which were sacred to the Sioux Indians. It was their holy land, but white settlers took it as their own. The Sioux are still fighting for their land. I half expected a Sioux to stop our car from entering, and the thing is, I would have been on his side. I would have said, take it. It's yours. We drove through the Black Hills to Mount Rushmore. At first, we didn't think we were in the right place, but then, jing bang, it was right before us. There, high up on a cliff face, were the 60-foot-tall faces of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt, carved right into the rock, staring somberly down at us. It was fine seeing the presidents. I've got nothing against the presidents. But you'd think the Sixty would be mighty sad to have those white faces carved into their sacred hill. I bet my mother was upset. I wondered why whoever carved them couldn't have put a couple Indians up there, too. Graham and Graham seemed disappointed as well. Graham didn't even want to get out of the car. So we didn't stay long. Graham said, I've had enough of South Dakota. How about you, Chickabitty? How about you, Gooseberry? Let's get a move on. By late afternoon, we were well into Wyoming, and I added up the miles left to go. Maybe we can make it. Just maybe. Then Grump said, I hope nobody minds if we stop at Yellowstone. It would be a sin to miss Yellowstone. Grump said, Is that where Old Faithful is? Oh, I would love to see Old Faithful. She looked back at me. We'll hurry. Why, I bet we'll be in Idaho by the 20th without any problem at all.